plus i sine 255. All right, in this lesson, we're going to work on multiplying two complex numbers that are written in trigonometric form. So here we're given two numbers. We have 6 times cosine 300 plus i sine 300. And our second number is <clears throat> 4 cosine 240 plus i sine 240. Um, so we have our formulas down here that we're given in our textbook. When you're multiplying two complex numbers that are in trigonometric form, you can you multiply the r that was in front. Okay, so in this case we had 6 and 4 were our r's. So on the front we're going to have 6 times 4. And then you have your cosine of the two angles added together. So here we had 300 degrees and here 240. So we're getting the cosine of 300 degrees plus 240 degrees. Plus I, okay, sine, and we add the two angles for our sine also. So again, it was the same, same angles, 300 and 240. All right? Well, 6 times 4 is 24, and that leaves us with cosine of <clears throat> 540, when I, we add our angles together, I sine 540 degrees. So if we wanted to go ahead and calculate that, the cosine of 540 degrees, and you can do that by um, subtracting 360 to find out where you are, because notice 540 means we've gone around the circle once. Um, we go 360 degrees. To get to 540, you end up right here at 180. Or you can use your calculator here and do cosine of 540 is negative 1. Also you could say well the cosine at 180 is negative 1. Plus I times the sine of 540. Well, the sine of 540 is 0. I just used my calculator to find that. But again you could also use exact values since 540 is once around the circle and then to the 180 degrees, and the sine of 180 we know is 0. Simplify that, negative 1, i times 0 is just 0, so we have 24 times negative 1, which is negative 24. So our answer to this problem is just plain old negative 24. It doesn't always happen that your i becomes 0, in fact, not very often. <clears throat> Let's do one more. So we are asked to find the product of z sub 1 times z sub 2, which z sub 1 and z sub 2 are these two complex numbers they were given us. So we're asked to multiply them by one another. Again, we're going to use our formula for multiplying complex numbers that are in trigonometric form. We multiply our r's that were on the front. So we're going to multiply 3 times 2 on the front. Then we have the cosine of, when you're multiplying, you add the angles, so the cosine of 24 plus 96 degrees, plus I sine of the two angles added together also. You should end up with the same angle for both sine and cosine. 2 times 3 is 6, and then we have the cosine of 24 plus 96 is 120 degrees plus I sine 120 degrees. Now if we calculate that, the sine of 120, that is one of our exact values that we know. 120 degrees would be this angle here, 60 degrees away from our x-axis. Um, the cosine at 120 is negative, and it happens to be negative 1 half. The exact value of sine at 120 is the square root of 3 over 2, and we still have our i there. So we have 6 times negative 1 half plus 3 over 2 i. We can go ahead and distribute the 6 by multiplying it through. 6 times negative 1 half is negative 3, and if I take 6 times 3 over 2, I get 6 root 3 over 2, but I can reduce that because 2 goes into 6 
three times. So I end up with 3 plus 3, root 3i, is the exact value of our z1 times z2. All right, here's another example. Evaluate 3 cis 45 degrees times 12 cis 164. Now remember this cis is just an abbreviation, okay? It means our full, this would be 3 times, see the C stands for cosine of our angle, which was 45, plus the IS is I sine of our angle, 45. That's just the abbreviation they use for complex numbers that are in trigonometric form. We're multiplying that by 12 cosine 164 plus I sine 164. And they're asking me to round my answer the nearest hundredth, which means this probably won't be an angle that has an exact value that we've memorized. Okay, So our formula says to multiply the numbers in front. So we have 3 times 12 on the front. Cosine of, since we're multiplying, we add our angles. So we have 45 degrees plus 164 degrees. And then plus I sine, do the same thing for our angle of sine, we just add the two angles together, 45 degrees plus 164 degrees. Okay, well 3 times 12 is 36, and then for my angles, 45 plus 164 is 209. So I have 36 times the cosine of 209 plus I sine 209. Now they wanted the, the answers rounded to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 36 and then I'm going to use my calculator to calculate because I know 209 is not one of our exact value angles. Let's grab my 36 I sine 209. So here I have 36 times the cosine of 209 which is negative 31 negative 31.49 if I round to the nearest hundredth, that's two places after my decimal, plus then we have 36 times the sine of 209, sorry that's so messy, which is negative 17.45 and don't forget your i that was with the sine. So we have negative 31.49 minus 17.45 i would be our answer rounded to the nearest hundredth. All right, let's go ahead and do one more of these. We're multiplying again, and again, they gave us just the abbreviation um, for our complex number. So remember, this would be 6 times cosine of the angle 18 plus I sine of the angle 18 degrees. We're multiplying that by 15 cosine 20, 223 degrees plus I sine 223 degrees. Okay, our rules say to multiply the numbers in front, so we'll have 6 times 15. Cosine of, we're going to add the two angles together, 18 plus 223 plus I sine 18 plus 223. <clears throat> 6 times 15 gives me 90 in front here, and then when I add those angles together, I get 241. So I have the cosine of 241 plus I sine 241. Now again, it's asking me to round to the nearest hundredth, so I, I don't have exact values for the angle 241 degrees. So I just distribute the 90, so I'll have 90 times the cosine of 241 plus 90i sine 241. Go ahead and multiply 90 times the cosine of 241 is negative 43.63 and 90 times the sine of 241 is also negative so I'm just going to put negative here and it's 78.72 and don't forget the i. So this would be our answer rounded to the nearest hundredth.